call this meeting of the Pittsburgh City Commission to order. Will you join me in the flag salute, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a proclamation this evening. If ladies and coaches, would you like to join me up front here? Office of the Mayor, City of Pittsburgh, Kansas, a proclamation. Whereas on Saturday, May 28, 2016, in Bradington, Florida, the Pitt State University women's outdoor track and field team captured the program's first NCAA Division II National Championship title. And whereas the student athletes, through their constant hard work, dedication, and perseverance, set high standards athletically as well as academically. And whereas sophomore standout, sophomore standout Emily Iverson won the national title in high jump with a clearance of 5 feet 9.75 inches. <clears throat> and whereas senior Cassie Caswell secured national runner-up finish in the shot put competition. And whereas the 400 meter relay team consisting of Ramey Grayson, Imani Hutchison, Kelsey Lewis and Courtney Nelson also scored a national runner-up finish. And whereas the team's composite GPA was 3.3, which earned them the distinction of being named the NCAA Division II Scholar Team of the Year by the U.S. Track and Field Coaches Association. Whereas the city of Pittsburgh is proud to be home to Pittsburgh State University, the Gorillas, and their loyal fans. Now, therefore, I, John Ketterman, Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh, Kansas, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, October 25th, 2016, as Pitt State University Women's Outdoor Track and Field Team Day in Pittsburgh and urge all the citizens to congratulate the women's outdoor track and field members and coaches on a tremendous season. Thank you, Commission. Um, this is really a cool deal. Um, it's quite an honor for us. Um, I'm really proud of these ladies. Um, these young women have been on a mission ever since the beginning of the uh, off season, really, last summer, and they've never relented. Um, they've worked really hard, um, laser focus, and came away with the, the most important trophy of all. We, we really are proud of you all. Um, they are outstanding students, as you've heard. They're outstanding representatives of not only Pittsburgh State, but this community, I promise you that, whenever they go out into the world and compete. Um, they will be the first to tell you, uh, they won't get an opportunity to tonight, but that they are, uh, not only they are responsible for this success, for this championship. Lots of support goes into that. We've got the greatest coaching staff, those three gentlemen on the far end down there, Coach Mantooth, Coach Brown, Coach Rutledge, really proud of them. A absolutely the best administrative support at Pittsburgh State anywhere in the country. Jim Johnson, thank you. Um, thank you to Dr. Steve Scott, who couldn't be here. Um, and right up the chain, I think you got to recognize that we've got the support of the greatest community that a college could have, I think, to, to be supported by. Um, case in point, um, very easy for us to point to our brand new home ladies, right? The Plaster Center, Robert W. Plaster Center um, would not be at least in the form it is right now, and it's grandeur, the best facility in all of Division II without the support of this group behind me and the support of the entire community of Pittsburgh. Um, we feel that. It really is a real factor in our success, um, and that's one that, that absolutely screams at us. So we appreciate that and all the other support. Um, any success we had, national championship, that is shared success. All those folks I just mentioned, any, any success we have in the future, um, extra special because it is shared success. So congratulations to you all, too for your shared success. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on behalf
behalf of uh, President Steve Scott, I want to uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the Commission, for acknowledging these incredible athletes and coaches. And um, just think, one year, uh, one full year, it's open, Plaster Center, and we get a national championship. You guys set the bar kind of high, so. <laughs> I, but uh, I just, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to have this opportunity to, to thank you all for for what you did. As Coach Jewett has said, this really is a shared success. This isn't about Pittsburgh State University or just Pittsburgh State University or these uh, fine young women. This is actually about this entire community and the kind of thing we accomplish when we do work together. And there's a couple of key stats that I wanted to get out in front of you all because uh, we feel responsible to you all for the money that you put into this this plaster center, which helped to make this accomplishment uh, happen. Eight of the first 12 weekends, of the, eight of the first, eight of 12 weekends in the first quarter of last year, we had filled with track events. We've had national championship, junior college national championship, a number of other community college uh, and other uh, high school events. Students that come through that center, uh, our recruiting advantage popped up. We get on the national scene because of that. We've had 24,000, more than 24,000 visitors to Pittsburgh that would not have come to Pittsburgh but for the Robert W. Plaster Center. So for that and for tonight, uh, on behalf of the university, I want to say thank you to the city of Pittsburgh, you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission, uh, and also to all these, uh, these young women who make us so proud. So thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Mary Jenkins. I'm now a fifth year senior. I'm old. Anyways, um, I just want to say being here for almost five years, I've never seen a town with such fan base that was so supportive. Being from a city, um, it's actually beautiful and it's wonderful. So I want to say thank you from all of us and also our other teammates who couldn't be here. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support, and I can't wait for this year. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, just to say on top of that, since you're from the city and you like it here so well, you're invited to stay once you graduate. We've done it a lot. Good job, everybody. Thank you. Congrats. <laughs> okay, I'll open up the meeting for any public input. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on any topic this evening? Mayor, only because we're going to end the meeting in executive session, can I go ahead and uh, ask Lisa to come up, or at least stand up? Lisa Kester is our new HR director. She is a fantastic find. We are in good hands, and I apologize for the last 12 months when I was your standing in <laughs> HR director. And thank heavens for Lisa. Do you want to say anything? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the warm welcome and introduction. And uh, my office is always open. Contact me if you need anything. Thanks, Lisa. Welcome, Lisa. Welcome, yeah. Okay, is there anything else? Go ahead. Come to the podium, state your name. And uh, my name is Cynthia Beitzinger, okay. and uh, I work out at the Best Barn with USD 250. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm here this evening to uh, a matter uh, with lighting out on Turner Road. I live at 804 Turner Road. And uh, there's a light they just put up um, over where Joe Minnelli lives. I think that's 805, isn't it? I think that's 805 Turner Road on that corner there. But off of Michigan, when you come in, uh, the light on Michigan, when you turn on Turner Road, it, it goes off occasionally. It's dark in the mornings when we do our bus route. We have a hard time seeing. We pass the corner four times with our bus, and we can't see in the mornings. It's hard to see. So when we turn on Turner Road, it's so dark and, until we get down there. I, le I leave my front light on the house for us. <laughs> so, But um, I've got a list of names all on Turner Road. <laughs> And um, that we'd like to have extra street light there, so um, it's one per block. 
so we can get more lighting out there because it is very pitch black out there in the mornings. <coughs> You're talking about the intersection of Turner and Michigan at that Yeah, right on the corner, Turner and Michigan. There's one on Michigan, but it does go out. The bulb goes out, and we have a hard time seeing. So when we turn on Turner Road, there's none there, which should be there. And there's none there either. So it's completely pitch dark for us when we go pick up the child. And, uh, and when we get by Manelli's, sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. I don't know if it's a solar, the sensor on it. They replaced the bulb. They worked on there, worked on it. They was out working on it. So I'm assuming maybe it's a sensor. I don't know. Okay. It's the only logical reason I could think why she it's. You mentioned this to me earlier this week, and uh, I asked her to come here and, and uh, talk to you guys about it. Didn't you also say there's some, uh, some crime issues uh, in the neighborhood? And uh, yes, we've had um, several incidents of uh, vandalism out there. Kids messing with our yard and her yard. Um, my car's been vandalized. Um, and uh, we, I had a vehicle stolen out of my yard. Some friends came down, stayed the weekend. Um, they stole the vehicle. And it's, I thought it was a nice neighborhood. <laughs> you know, no problems. But I work at the high school. I do security. I work with a deputy out there. And um, I have kids mad at me for getting them suspended. And they come down through our yard between through uh, Pat Wooder Wooderman and between my house. We live right beside each other. And they come between our yards up there. And we've, ha we've had a lot of vandalism, a lot of problems. And um, um, I put security cameras up and, uh, to help with the situation and it has night vision on there. And you could kind of see pretty good, but not real good. So I had to put motion lights up on the front of my house and bring them up to, so you could see more clear the faces when people come around in your yard at nighttime and stuff. So um, I had to do that. Um, like I said, there's been several incidents. She's had problems in her yard with kids going in there um, wanting to steal stuff. I heard them at night. I had to run them off, and I called her up to let her know. I mean, yeah, we've had a lot of problems out there at nighttime. So, and, and there was a letter, a complaint about my motion light. Um, I mentioned um, to Chuck about my light. Uh, a person was complaining about it um, over in a block down from where I live at, and uh, it was brought my, to my attention. And uh, the reason why that light is there is for security purposes, for my security camera, for my vehicles. Um, I asked Dave, he's a bus driver, um, and he clarified with Chuck, it's not blinding. He could drive, actually it helps him to see, you know, to get down that road. I leave it on in the morning so we can see. I used to shut it off, but it's so dark, I leave it on in the morning where we're doing our bus route. And then my mother lives there, I have her shut it off after, you know, almost 7 o'clock, 10 till 7. Time we get done with our route, pick it up, Robbie, on that route, on that road. So, Sharon, is this information she can give to either Tammy or you, and you guys? Yeah, can we'll, look well, at I it? think we know the location now, so we'll go out, yeah. um, check it out, see what yeah. we can get engineered to yeah. solve it, and then bring it back to you guys to consider. Thanks. Thank All right, thanks. Oh, was that your 805? Okay. <laughs> well, they'll know the corner where that light is, street light. <laughs> so if we come knock on that door, Joe's not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public input this evening? If not, I'll close public input and move the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed this evening? Um, sir, do you need the listing of the names that I got? No. Um, you can leave that with Tammy if you want, but... Okay, I didn't That's know if you needed them or not. No, it's not necessary. Okay. <laughs> uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. Moved and second. A roll call vote. Gray? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ketterman? Aye. Munzel? Aye. <clears throat> Uh, under consider the following item A is being removed this evening and will be put back on at a later date. So we'll go to item B, limelight, <coughs> excuse me, limelight marketing, housing campaign proposal. 
consider, consider staff recommendation to approve a contract in the amount of $11,560 between the city and Limelight Marketing for a communications campaign and associated work aimed at attracting residential developers to the city of Pittsburgh. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Uh, we are at a point in our effort to increase the uh, housing in the city that we have enough information, um, probably need to get it to somebody that could make a decision on whether to develop in Pittsburgh. I'm not talking about building houses, I'm actually talking about larger developments. And um, as is sometimes the case of the city, we realize our shortcomings, and one of them is that we do not have a marketing um, talent pool, if you will. We have some people that are pretty good at it, but overall, when it comes time to do something this important, we uh, reached out to our local partner. Brandy is the president and CEO of Limelight Marketing, a firm that we helped start um, over a year ago, and thought it was a good idea in this case to reach out to her firm and get a proposal for what they could do for us, since that's not really our, our thing. And uh, she has that proposal in front of you. She is here to answer any questions that you have, and uh, I will turn it over to Brandy and you for any questions. Brandy? Yes, um, as Darren introduced me, my name is Brandy Johnson. I own Limelight Marketing, a marketing agency here in Pittsburgh. And over the last uh, course of a month or so, I've been working with Darren and some of his staff, and we've discussed the opportunity to um, create a, a campaign to promote, uh, bring awareness and promote the need for housing development in Pittsburgh. And so, as you'll see in the proposal that you've received, there are a couple different components to this, um, to this effort. The first is gathering some insights. So there's already been some surveying and some reports done. There's a lot of um, data that's going to be available at our fingertips that we'll um, dig into and pull out some key findings and statistics that will help support the story and build the story for the need for housing in Pittsburgh. And the second component will be developing the communication framework so that so we know that in order to reach out to p prospective developers and to um, encourage them to consider developing in Pittsburgh, we need a compelling story for why they would want to do that and why they would want to invest here and what the return on investment could look like. And so we'll be building out that communication framework. Um, the next component is developing the campaign assets, which include things like press releases and um, infographics that would convey the story in a compelling way. It includes website copy, newspaper ads, and so forth. Um, a video as well that would help tell the story. And then the last component is a six-month campaign, um, ongoing campaign where we're delivering this content out, targeting developers, and uh, building awareness to this need and hopefully ultimately generating leads for the city to um, begin negotiations with. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that there are about the proposal. I didn't have any questions. Question. Okay. Uh, do you need an approval on this tonight? I would like one. <laughs> well, <laughs> to your pleasure. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve come back when they had it figured in, to approve it then or what we No, this is the before. contract to have them go forward. So I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Thank you very Randy. much. Thank you very Thanks, much. Randy. Good Thank job. you. <coughs> okay, item C, revision of neighborhood revitalization plan. Consider <coughs> staff request to revise the neighborhood revitalization plan and adopt the resolution number 1193, authorizing and directing an, the ex execution of an interlocal agreement with Crawford County and Unified School District 250. Good, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, I have really good news for you. This is going to be abbreviated. We're not adopting a resolution tonight. Um, after having consultation with Mr. Mangeni, um, I realized that I had my steps out of order a bit. So in the neighborhood revitalization plan, which I'm sure you're familiar with, is the tax refund. It's the property tax refund program um, designed to redevelop neighborhoods. Um, there's two pieces to it. One is entering into an interlocal agreement between the county, school district, and the city, and the other is adopting the plan itself. 
Tonight, what I'm going to ask you to do ultimately is to terminate the old interlocal agreement that we entered into into 2008. And that way, as I have conversations with the county and the school district, we can develop a new interlocal agreement. Later in uh, November, late November, I'll ask you to terminate the old neighborhood revitalization plan so that we can adopt a new one. But I wanted to bring it to your attention tonight. Um, and you should have some revised papers uh, before you. One is a map of the newly proposed neighborhood re revitalization program. Oops, that got smaller. Um, the purpose for doing this is, is, is pretty apparent. Um, one, we've completed all of the infrastructure development we said we were going to do in the 2008 plan. Um, we also have some significant development opportunities in front of us with the Block 22 redevelopment downtown, with the uh, mid-city renaissance around the Mission Clay area, and then with um, some of the wonderful expansion that the university is doing around the Kelts School of Business. Um, but then in addition, the, the best practices surrounding these type of revitalization programs uh, really suggest that we have a smaller footprint. So. Our former um, plan area was most of the community. So what that says, um, when you're marketing yourself, if most of your community needs to be revitalized, it's, it's demonstrating that what our need is a little bit greater than it should actually be. By shrinking it to census tract areas that show uh, high poverty rates, high vacancy rates in housing structures, um, and then a high need to redevelop businesses, we could see a greater impact. So the proposal that I'll bring before you in November would be to shrink the plan to the area that you see represented on this map for a period of five years. Um, ultimately, there is another map that I could present to show you what to do with it the next five years, and then we've also projected out for um, a total of 15 years so that we can see the bulk of the city uh, represented in those plans but broken down into phases. So tonight what I would ask for you to do is to um, vote to terminate the interlocal agreement that was created in 2008 for purposes of the neighborhood revitalization plan so that we can move forward with this process. Question? Have a motion? So moved. Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any non agenda reports or requests? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, executive session. An executive session uh, is necessary this evening will be to consult with legal counsel regarding items deemed privileged by the attorney-client relationship. Do I have a motion to recess into executive session? You need to put a duration of time on Oh, uh, 45 minutes? Yes. For approximately 45 minutes. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourn the executive session. Okay, we're back from executive sessions. No decision was were made. No votes were taken. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So Take a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Yeah.